I made a video last night and I said I was completely shocked by how fast the Taliban was taking over Afghanistan, but it turns out I grossly understated the situation. Now, hopefully this will serve as proof that my YouTube videos are not clickbait and I'm not just engaging in hyperbole. Things are actually moving even much faster than what I said. So, what I said last night was that by the end of the day, August 13th, two or three more provincial capitals will probably fall to the Taliban. Well, it's more like six or seven. Now, when I made the video, the Taliban was already claiming victory in Herat and Kandahar, which are two of the biggest cities in Afghanistan. But honestly, I figured that it was probably an exaggeration because uh, I'm so used to following battles in Syria and Libya and Yemen and what was going on in Iraq a few years ago and everything moves in super super slow motion and a lot of the players wildly exaggerate and they sit on the internet and say today we destroyed the infidel at x location and uh, humiliated them and tomorrow we will take y z and x inshallah Allahu Akbar and then the other side would say, no, you did not. I've been sitting right here. We never saw you. you. You are infidel. No, you are the one who is the infidel. And this goes on for three months. And every time there's a conflict, both sides claim victory. Well, this is, this is completely different. And honestly, I would not even call this a blitzkrieg because there is so little actual krieg. And so this morning when I woke up, there was new videos on Twitter from both Herat and Kandahar showing convoys of Afghan military vehicles fleeing the cities. Uh, right now, state departments around the world are confirming that the Taliban is in control of both of those two cities. Now, two of the other provincial capitals that I thought were strong candidates to fall today were Tarinkaut and Pauli Alam, and I don't really know how you're actually supposed to pronounce those, uh, but those are both two really small provincial capitals that the Taliban's already been fighting around them as it is. Uh, well, both of those fell, but then two others fell just out of the blue. Uh, Feroz Kohl and Kalat, and I have no idea how to pronounce those either, uh, but uh, those are both two small provincial capitals. They seem to have fallen without any fight as well. And Gardez, which is actually a larger city, uh, depending on who you ask, somewhere between 70 and 100,000 people. The Taliban is not even there yet. And the uh, city government issued a joint statement with local Pashtun tribal leaders saying that when the Taliban gets here, we surrender. <laughs> They're surrendering. They're giving the Taliban advance notice that they're standing by waiting to surrender. So that's six more provincial capitals under the control of the Taliban, plus another that surrendered in advance. That's 19 out of 34. The Taliban controls over half of all provincial capitals. The Taliban is also claiming another major milestone in that an aircraft for the first time landed at a Taliban-controlled airport. This was a United Nations aircraft. In the United Nations, I can't find anywhere where they're saying what the purpose is. I assume it's under some kind of humanitarian pretense. But uh, the United Nations scheduled an incoming flight with the Taliban, and it landed. Another weird thing that happened today is ISIS is claiming that they activated sleeper cells in Jalalabad and Kunduz. And this is, uh, you occasionally hear about ISIS in Afghanistan. I don't think there's a whole lot of them. They briefly had carved out like a tiny territory uh, in the middle of nowhere and they were fighting against the Taliban. Uh, they're claiming that they killed some Taliban soldiers in Kunduz and some Afghan soldiers in uh, Jalalabad. Now, the two largest cities left that are still under government control are Mazar-e-Sharif and Jalalabad. Now, the only reason Jalalabad is still under government control is because it's geographically isolated. 
to the north is a vast mountain range, to the west is Kabul, and to the east and south is the Pakistani border. And so there's just nothing going on in that area right now. Uh, Mazar-e-Sharif is a major city. It's in between two other large cities that the Taliban took a week ago, and it is putting up resistance. So the big hope of the government in Kabul right now is that ethnic militias will save the day in Mazar-e-Sharif, and then they'll have Kabul, that city, and then the Hazara territories in the middle, and they can still claim that they have some semblance of some kind of country going on. Uh, basically, Kabul is flying cargo planes to uh, Mazar-e-Sharif and just dumping off cargo planes full of weapons. And India is bringing cargo planes full of weapons into Kabul. And so they're probably just unloading those planes into all the weapons into a different plane and sending it to Sh Sharif. So uh, here is the guys that they're hoping are going to save the day. So there's Muhammad Noor, who's a Tajik warlord and the current governor of the province that Mazar-e-Sharif is in. And then there's a Uzbek warlord, Dastam, that they flew into the city about a day and a half ago. Now, here's their backgrounds. In the 80s, Muhammad Noor led Tajik militia against the Soviets. And then in the 90s, he fought against Dostum's Uzbek militia. And then Dostum was a Soviet ally in the 80s who led pro-communist militia fighting against Muhammad Noor's militia. And then in the 90s, he led Uzbek militia fighting against Muhammad Noor, as I said earlier. And then in 2001, the two of these guys uh, united with American backing to attack the Taliban and to take the city Mazar-e-Sharif from the Taliban in 2001. And so right now, Kabul's great hope is that if they pour enough weapons onto the city, that these Tajik and Uzbek militias will once again unite and fight the Taliban like they did in 2001. So yesterday, the Afghan government presented the Taliban delegation in Qatar with a power sharing agreement. Today, they presented them with a new revised ceasefire agreement. Uh, frankly, if the Taliban agrees to a ceasefire, it's probably not gonna be for a few days from now because they're probably gonna take some more provincial capitals over the next few days. And once they get to Jalalabad, they'll probably take that city. And then they'll have every major city except for Kabul and Mazari Sharif. And honestly, Mazari Sharif will probably fall too. Uh, it just might take a while. I don't know how long. Um, now, what happens when Kabul is completely surrounded and under siege? Uh, I still don't think it's a done deal that they're just going to surrender the city, but I have no idea what's going to happen now. It, it's, it's moving so fast. Now, certainly the rapid takeover of a nation is not unprecedented in human history. It's happened many times, but I don't think we've seen anything quite like this in several decades. And I personally feel vindicated because 20 years ago, I told people that I thought it was stupid for America to invade Afghanistan. All we had to do was tell Pakistan in 30 minutes, we're going to violate your airspace. And then we knew where all the Al Qaeda bases were. America had been monitoring them for years at that point. All we had to do was airdrop special forces around the sites, bomb them, and then machine gun anyone who came out of the smoke and then extract everyone and leave and be gone in a few hours, and that would have been it. Instead, we did a 20-year occupation. Uh, the Pentagon flushed, what, a trillion dollars down the toilet into a black hole. Well, I shouldn't say a black hole. It went to make the donor class 
wealthy. So all kinds of people in the America's military industrial complex made out quite handsomely, but the Taliban appears to be much more popular today than it was 20 years ago. So congratulations, Pentagon, for wasting all those taxpayer dollars and getting all those people killed. All right, click the like button, post a comment below, tell me what you think about this, and please subscribe to my backup channels on BitChute and Odyssey, and click the subscribe button, new video every few days.